What's up guys, back in my car again. Just cause I get bored of being in my office making videos and I've been enjoying these car rides with y'all. These little trips in the park and riding around in my car. So I figured on my way to my office today, I'll just turn it back on and rap with you. And if you read my letter today, which you can read down below, I spoke about women girls feminine the feminine aspect feminine energy right and i made reference to carl jung which i quite i do quite often because carl jung is the guy who basically did the map of the psyche using symbols you know many of the symbols that we see in mythology and in stories uh come from carl jung's mapping of the unconscious so uh symbols like king warrior magician and lover but also he used the term anima and animus. Anima with an A and then animus, like a U-S at the end, to describe the masculine and the feminine energy that resides within each one of us. Every human being has both a masculine and a feminine aspect of its psyche. All right, so you know, although we show up physically as masculine, right, with a big old dick, or maybe not a big one, but a dick, uh, or a vagina, we also come from the essence of a integrated uh, sexuality. We're, we're both men and women at the core, at the psyche level, at the level of the unconscious. There are physical manifestations of masculinity and femininity, but we're both. Right, and that's basically the concept uh, that I'm trying to share with you right now, and he calls it the anima and animas. And uh, we live in an interesting time now where sex roles are being challenged. Sex role, the, the, the line between what is masculine, what is feminine, has clearly been blurred, right? And we see this just from the progression of what would be a typical 1950s uh, or, or post World War II, women's suffrage, uh, liberation attitude towards sex roles, which shows up uh, as women wearing business suits, you know, women are, are engaging in what were typically masculine activities, masculine jobs, taking masculine roles. You know, they're, they're stepping up to the plate and becoming career women. Uh, many of them, of which I am great friends with, and I see them on a daily basis, strength train now. My wife is, she, she's pulling almost 200 pounds. So these are, these are kind of new to, in the realm of things. It's kind of new for all these women to be embracing their masculine and stepping into these roles. Prior to, you know, the, the, the Lucy and Ricky days that we knew in black and white TV, where, you know, the man was uh, the macho breadwinner and the woman was a submissive housewife, we now see a, a swapping of roles. And in the swapping of these roles or the blurring of these lines, there's a lot of confusion, there's a lot of animosity, there's a, uh, a lot of fucking confusion, right? Because as we as we find ourselves uh, in a world where women are taking on more masculine roles and, and responsibilities, right? I mean, think about how many single moms there are who have to play, who were forced to. It's not even a choice. They're not even like stepping up and saying, you know what, fuck it, it's a man's world, but I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it with the woman's edge. They're forced into it. They're forced to be dads, you know. Uh, <laughs> The men who aren't stepping up or the men who are, I don't want to say victim, I don't ever think we're victims of anything, but the men who are, who become a part of the system, right, you know, in prison and whatnot, aren't there, aren't there for their children and, 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 the, and the mom has to step up and be a, be a soldier, be a warrior in the best way that she possibly could. You know, biology means a lot. Bi I said it the other day that biology trumps ideology any anyway, and a man can't replace a woman and a woman can't replace a man, but we can cultivate the attitude or the character traits associated with one or the other. And, uh, and, and we're talking a lot about, and we're experiencing this emergence of the divine feminine. When I say divine feminine, I mean like the, the wholeness, the fullness, the full expression of what uh, what the feminine is capable of. And the feminine has its animas, right? It has its 
but it's masculine side. So it's an interesting dance. It's interesting and it's beautiful to watch a woman dance between her masculine and her feminine. I finished my letter uh, describing the, the beautifully muscled, tender, aggressive woman in high, <laughs> in high heels and a miniskirt to describe this this beautiful blend of the masculine and the feminine that is arising in many of the women that um, at least I see in my life. I watch it in my wife. I watch how she stepped into the role of uh, being a leader with the children, especially when I'm not there. I have to work. A lot of men have to work and the women end up taking care of the children. So they have to step up and be aggressive, uh, disciplining and uh, essentially creating or, or, or providing a masculine framework while the man is not there, while I'm not there. My wife does this. Right, and she goes to the gym. She trains. Uh, she's got ambitions, hopes, and dreams, and dr and, and and things and thinks and behaves in a way that uh, is much different than the the girl I married. And I see it in the women in my gym. That I see it in culture. And I think we're all pretty much aware of it. Now, the other half of the story here, fellas which is a little bit of a, of a mind fuck because culture has given us these clearly defined roles and what is appropriate to play. And for men, our role, which, you know, by the way, we all kind of, you know, the roles are bio biological, but they're also uh, sociological. We also, and psychological. We, uh, we, sort of, we sort of give ourselves these roles, but the masculine role the, the typical masculine role or, or, the, or the traditional masculine role, the way for men to be, uh, arises out of a need that men have, that women don't have. You know, a part of our hard heartedness and a part of our inability to see the way the women are evolving by taking on masculine traits, what makes it really difficult for us as men, for men in general, to take on those feminine traits. By the way, I'm sitting up like this because I know the sun is behind me. It's like my fucking head is glowing. It's a little di it's a little bit more difficult for us to take on the feminine traits. And of course, society has placed labels on, you know, feminine men. And, you know, if you, if you show up a little bit feminine, of course, you know, you're suspect. Oh, what is this guy? Gay? Right? Not that, you know, it's very cool. It's very interesting now that, you know, uh, homosexuality is pretty much out of the closet but still we got like you know there's this there's this sort of suspect attitude towards femininity in the in the male character the modern male character and the reason why like i said it's out of necessity the reason why these roles are more tra easily transcended by women and harder for men to to transcend and, and why they're suspect with regard to men who adopt any and integrate any of their anima, any of their femininity into their character, uh, comes from the fact that young men, boys, have to, I spoke about this in a video earlier this week or last week, have to have the double work, have the extra job of not just creating ego separation from the mother, which the, the little girl has to do also when she realizes that, uh, you know, the, that she's not the mom. You know, this is, if you study psychology, especially infant development, you start to real, you, you begin to realize or you'll realize that when an infant comes into the world, it still believes that it's one. The world is one, right? The ego hasn't been developed yet. So it believes it's, it's mother. It believes it's the world. It's still steeped in the unification, the unified field of godlike thinking, right? Which is inappropriate for a human being with an ego. We, we gotta separate. A little history there for you. A little uh, academics there for you. So as the, as the ego has to differentiate, as the ego has to create its own identity, the little girl does so by standing on her own two feet and saying, you're mommy, I'm daddy. Um, I'm your mommy and I'm, I'm not mommy, I'm a little girl. But we're both girls. Little boy, on the other hand, it ain't so easy because you've got to separate yourself as an ego, but also at the same time, you've got to establish sexual identity. Whoa, wait a second. Mommy's a girl and I'm a boy. So the, the, the hardwired need or, or desire to create contrast 
between the masculine and feminine for men is that much more difficult. So for us to, we're a little late, in other words, in integrating our anima into our character because there's so much resistance due to the fact that it's just normal and natural that we have to become separate ego identities, but also establish and, and not just establish in ourselves, but be nurtured by others, to be acknowledged by other men, to be acknowledged by your mom and women that you yes, you are a man. You are a man, right? Women never forget that they're women. <laughs> no matter how much of a man they become, right? You can have the most hard-hearted feminist female wearing a, wearing pants and, and, and shoes, you know, straight up just like dressing like a man. Um, but they don't forget they're women. No one can challenge them that they're a woman. No one can say, you know what, you're not really a woman. But especially at their, at their, in their hearts. But men, we get scared. What are you, a woman? What are you, a bitch? <laughs> right? That's how we tease each other. What are you, being a little girl? But you say it to a woman, you say it to a girl, what are you, being a boy? It's really, it doesn't hold the same negative association. It doesn't hold the same sting as stop being a little girl when you say it to a boy. I know because I'm a boy and I wouldn't like somebody to say, stop being a little girl to me, right? When I was a kid especially, now I'm, I'm far more mature. I've learned a lot about myself. I've learned about, I learn more about the world and I understand sexual polarity that much more and I realize and I'm learning and those of you who are recognizing contrast in my behavior and my attitude and my way of being and they're confused and like Elliot you're wearing earrings and shit and I've got a, a shirt on with a with a heart blooming with flowers and butterflies and I wear this crystal which represents love and compassion right the fuck is going on Elliot you becoming a fag <laughs> right I mean that would be the typical uh imbalanced immature masculine approach to the divine masculine being expressed through another man. Now, if there's any question about my sexuality, if there's any question about your sexuality, simply because you're integrating, or I'm integrating, more feminine aspects in me and in yourself, right? First, and let's talk about that. Let's talk about what those feminine aspects are. Let's talk about what the feminine shows up like in a man. You know, I talked about my dress, my, the way I'm dressing, my hair and my jewelry, even my behavior, which some of you notice is far more flowing, far more relaxed, far more grounded, if you will. Meaning that I don't have that hyperactive, uh, premature ejaculating energy that most young men carry with them because it's highly praised and uh, useful to, uh, you know, it's, it's useful. It's useful to, so, sometimes less useful to us personally and more useful to uh, <laughs> the warmongers, governments, and corporations, right? For us to stay in particular roles so they could use us as cogs in their machine. But when you begin exploring and integrating your anima or your feminine aspect, you're going to recognize a few shifts in even your mindset you know one of the major shifts in my set in my mindset over the past year as I'm what you're watching me do and I don't say this out of uh, it blowing my own horn or anything I'm just like this is what I'm doing this is who I am this is what you're experiencing and if you want to know what I'm doing you want to know what the fuck's going on with Elliot Hulse well shit I, I have no problem being objective about it and just sharing it with you just telling you what I'm doing and who I am. And uh, and yes, I'm becoming more feminine. Yes, I'm becoming softer, more flowing. Yes, you will find a Elliot Hulse and any masculine who, design, who desires to integrate his anima and become more full and whole and evolve and divine dancing. You'll find us singing. You'll find us wearing jewelry. You'll find us creating art. You'll find us breathing into our balls while we relax and breathe with our women rather than always trying to poke them, right? Can, can, 
Are you integrated enough with your feminine that you could have a relationship with a woman? Have a have communication with a woman without uh, actively pursuing the smashing? <laughs> actively pursuing the punani, right? Do, do, you, do we have to? Every time you're with a woman. Can you embrace the beauty of a woman? This is how you know that you're 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 integrating your divine masculine with the anima. Can you embrace the beauty of a woman? Admire a woman's sensuality, sexuality, and beauty without having to own it, right? When I say that, it's like, yo, do you have do you have to lay it down every time you're with around a woman? You will find that as you grow in your femininity, as you become more balanced and whole that you, you start to ease up a little bit you don't feel like you have to but then we don't want extremes because in this and we do live in this age of extremes we don't want extremes where not that we don't want it but you know maybe it's not always most resourceful for us and we need to look at ourselves when we become too feminine right now I don't have that problem I won't have that problem because shit I exercise I exercise my masculine pretty fucking hard for many years like I wrote in my letter down below I grew up around boys doing boy things and that was fucking it even my you know my business which you know me as look at my YouTube channel if you look at how many people are the people the demographics that are watching my videos it's something like 90% men right I'm confident in my masculinity I'm firm in my masculinity in my madness, I have no problem wearing hearts on my shirt and wearing my heart on my sleeve. I'm talking about relationship with women without smashing. Does that make me gay? I don't know. You decide, right? Because if you see this part of me emerging and you see the feminine in other men emerging and you're uncomfortable, what is it about your sexuality, young man, that you're uncomfortable about? That's my question to you. If you can't become fully integrated, you can't become whole, which includes, yes, king, warrior, magician, and lover, but also its contrast, its complement, its anima. If you can't, if you can't access all that, then you've got some questions to ask yourself and some growing up to do, young man. So that's it. That's Elliot Hulse giving his rant today. Man, these rants are getting longer and longer, but hey, people ask me to make. Look, those of you guys who want me to make shorter videos, get on my Instagram. I've got I've got my team creating little 15 second clips. I get it. Like, I, I have to reconcile that myself. There are those who want to learn, who are willing to listen, who want 20 minutes of information, which I'm willing to offer, especially as I'm driving right now and I could just rant. And those of you guys who are still, look, I get it too. Because there ain't too many videos I'm going to watch this 20 minutes long. I like those 15 second clips on Instagram. So, of course, I, I, I acknowledge that. I have no judgment against it. And I want to serve the best way I can. So go to my Instagram and uh, you'll get 15 second clips that are ripped right out of these little these 20 minute videos and whatnot. So anyway, that's it, man. Those of you who stuck around and watched this entire video, I apologize. Well, I can't apologize for the sun, man. The glory of the sun that's behind me the entire time while I'm talking, that's basking it. You might not be able to see the clearness in my face and in my eyes because the sun behind me. But hey, what's life without a sun behind us? And that's it, y'all. I drove way past my office because I was talking to you. I'm going to make a U-turn and talk to you tomorrow. Actually, no. I'll talk to you Monday. Done.